Hello, welcome to this course. The course name is System Programming. This course is for third year computer science engineering students. Uh, my name is Deepak Uttal Koshti, working as assistant professor in Singhad College of Engineering, having around 10 years of teaching experience. So this particular lecture uh, will point to the introduction of system programming. I have also mentioned my blog address, learnspcc.blogspot.com. From here, you can download notes, PowerPoint presentations, and all the details of this particular course. So let us start with the presentation. Let us start with this lecture. The contents of today's lecture are objective, outcome, what is system programming, software development steps. So let us see one by one how uh, objective. Objective of today's lecture is to learn and understand fundamentals of system software. So to learn fundamentals of system software, you must know what is mean by system software. So system software is a software which is required to run a particular system. Here system means a computer or a machine or a desktop. Each and every desktop, computer, laptop, or machine, whatever we say, must have operating system on it. Then and then only we can use that. Along with operating system, we have various softwares. We have Microsoft Office, we have a calculator, we have VLC Media Player. So what are these that we are going to see? Outcome of today's lecture is you will be able to differentiate between what is system software, what is application software, difference between both, as well as you will be able to tell and explain the steps involved in developing any software. So let us start with what is system programming. So in system programming subject, we are going to see different steps involved in developing a system program. Now, what is system program? As I discussed right now, system program is nothing but a software which is required to run or to start any machine. Please note, hereafter, I'll mention machine. Machine means computer, machine means personal computer, machine means desktop, machine means laptop, machine means all these terms are nothing but machine. So for any machine to run, we need an operating system. So we call operating system as an system software. One more example here we have is loaders and linkers. So what is mean by loader? What is mean by linker? All these things are going to be taught in our course. These are different chapters. But for time being, keep in mind, in short, a system program is nothing but an application which is required to run a particular machine. Now, let us differentiate it with application software. Application software is nothing but a program or a software which is installed above operating system. So without application program, system can work. Example of application software is Microsoft Office. So without installing Microsoft Office, we can start the machine and we can use the machine also. So if this is the program, Microsoft Office is the program, which is not compulsory to be installed on the machine, then this is called as application software. So again, in short, we can say application softwares are dependent on the user. Whoever wants that, they can install that. One more example of application software is VLC Media Player. VLC Media Player is required to play different videos. This is one of the software. So without VLC Player also, our machine works very well, no problem. So system programs are the programs which are must and application programs are optional, dependent on use which application program is to be installed. I hope you understood the difference between system program and application program. So to understand our course system programming, you must know the different steps involved in software development. 
So these are the seven steps I have mentioned over here. Planning, feasibility analysis, product design, coding, implementation and integration, software testing, installation and maintenance. So these are the steps we will see one by one. So first step is planning. So planning is to be done for developing any software. How to plan? Just give the answers of three different questions. What type of software is to be developed? Second, how this software will be developed? And third, when this software is to be delivered? Means when we want to give deliverables to the client. So these three steps involves planning. I can tell there is a separate subject named as software engineering, which gives you in detail steps for developing any software. I'm just giving overview here. So this is what the planning, what, how and when. Next step is we have to check feasibility also. That means as we are getting money from the client, we should not commit client that we will give your software within two days. So if it is not possible, don't commit it. Best example of this is, which is non-technical example. You should not commit anyone that if you are getting two crores of award, you should not commit that I will finish 25 kilometers lap within two minutes. So it is not possible, right? So whatever is possible, that is to be planned. So possibility must be checked before planning. So feasibility check is much more important to decide the deadlines. Next is product design. So for any software, we have front end. We have different forms. So for that front end forms are to be designed. So by clicking on which link, where that uh, software will take us is nothing but the next form. So forms and the different links to these forms must be given by the coder. So forms are given by the product design. So design report is very much important for the coder to code the program. So automatically the next is next step is coding. As I just mentioned, coders or a team of coding needs design report. So Coders will just check the design report and depending on the coding will be done, depending on the uh, front end, back end, everything will come into picture. Once the coding is done by different teams, team A, team B, team C, different modules are given to each and every team. Now next step is integration of all these modules. So team A will do something, team B will do something, team C will do something. Now it's time to collaborate everything, to integrate everything. So each and every work is taken and final deliverable is made ready. But before it is a final de deliverable, next step, which is very much important, that is nothing but testing. So without testing, it is very much impossible to install the software on client's machine. So software testing checks all the different possibilities. I have given here example as password. So as per the uh, design report, a password is to be given for every user of a software. And if, it, if that particular software is accessed without using a password, then we can say that there is a problem. So password policies are there, uh, three or four characters plus letters plus special symbols. Whether all these policies are uh, taken into, into consideration mm -hmm. while coding is must be checked. So all these small things are taken into consideration while software testing. So testers will come into picture once the deliverable is given by the coders. Once the software testers tells that now everything is okay, the next step comes into picture that is step number seven, that is installation and maintenance. So what is this step? Once a particular uh, software is designed successfully, uh, implemented successfully, now it's time to install that particular executable deliverable to the client's machine. Client's machine must be compatible for whatever is designed by the particular company. Once that particular installation is done, a particular demo is to be given to the client. 
because client don't know what is that and how it is to be used so for that demo is must be given and after that each and every company gives a particular software for some period of time suppose say 6 months 1 year or 5 year depends so after that they have to purchase the license that maintenance part is nothing but whatever changes are there these changes is to be reflected in the software so maintenance also comes into picture so installation and maintenance is the last step i hope you have understood all the different steps let us revise these steps as planning feasibility analysis product design coding implementation and integration software testing installation and maintenance for each and every step a different manpower is given by the company planning is done by somebody else feasibility analysis is done by the next team if there is a problem immediately a planning team and feasibility analysis team sits together and uh, redesigns uh, re uh, replans the same thing after that designer will come into picture it will the product will be designed after that coding coders will come into picture by taking the design then implementation and integration then testers will come into picture and at last installation and maintenance is to be done so this was in this first lecture introduction concluding remark is now you will be able to answer what is the difference between application software and system software and you will be also able to uh, give different steps involved in developing any software i hope you cleared every point thank you happy learning visit my blog https to colon uh, learnspcc.blogspot.com here you can get all the material for you you can also put the comments on youtube you can also put the uh, you can also mail me from my blogspot i'll try to reply you as early as possible thank you thank you very much and happy learning